My dearly beloved, I would like to concentrate this morning on two topics in our Sunday, Sunday sermon. And the first would be that as suggested to us by Father's Day today. The importance of the role of the Catholic Father. Certainly we know that the family is under assault and has been for some time in our society today by false philosophies that undermine the sanctity and the unity and the importance of the family. And likewise also the role of the father and of the mother are undermined by false philosophies. The role of the mother is undermined by those who would paint the role of a woman, a mother, who stays home and cares for her household and children as somehow being incomplete. That unless a woman has a career, has some kind of a career outside her home, that she has, has somehow been unfulfilled and, and has in some degree perhaps failed, not recognizing the beauty, the importance, the excellence of the role of a mother raising her children, teaching them, training them day in and day out. Likewise, the role of the father is un undermined. In our modern world, our culture seems to even ridicule or downplay the role of the father, oftentimes representing the father as someone who is incompetent, incapable of leading. But we know that the role of the father is one of leadership. The father is the head of the family and has the role to make decisions and to lead his family to God. To lead them to God by leading them in prayer, by teaching the faith, but above all, by giving the example of Christian living. That is the very best and the most important lesson a father can give, to lead by example. And fathers have St. Joseph as their model to imitate even though we do not know a great deal about St. Joseph, as little is mentioned of him in Scripture, we know that St. Joseph was the perfect father. Yes, a foster father, but an excellent father chosen by God himself. St. Joseph is referred to as the shadow of God the Father on earth. And our divine Lord reverenced his heavenly father in St. Joseph. Likewise, every father of a family is a sort of surrogate for God the Father. Because children, after all, are creations of Almighty God and are given to parents to care for and to train and to raise that they might then give them back to God. And so St. Joseph is a wonderful example of fidelity to his daily duty, solicitude for his family, providing for them, protecting them, guarding them, day in and day out, being filled with anxiety and concern and care for the Holy Family, for our Blessed Mother and the Divine Christ Child. So fathers, today especially, should pray to St. Joseph to strengthen you in fulfilling your very important role of the father of your family. Now, in speaking of fathers, we think of the words of our Lord. On many occasions, our Lord spoke of his Father in heaven. And we see that deep love that Jesus had for his heavenly Father. And he also pointed out the providence of God the Father for us. You remember when our Lord said, If you fathers, evil as you are, meaning that we are all sinners, we are all imperfect, and even the best human father is a very faint image of God the Father, and we might say a very poor reflection, for we are all sinners and all very imperfect. And so our Lord said, if you, evil as you are, know how to give good things to your children, how much more will not your heavenly Father give good things to those who ask him? If a child asks for bread, will the father give the child a stone? If a child asks for an egg, will his father give him a scorpion? These are the words of our Lord to show us, of course not. Earthly fathers and mothers love their children, 
and will even sacrifice themselves to provide for their children. But magnify that a hundredfold, a thousandfold, infinitely in fact. And then we can gain some idea of the love of our Heavenly Father for each of us. And our Lord paints this wonderful image of the Heavenly Father. He very often spoke of His Father, and we see His deep love for His Father. But we could also say that Jesus Christ Himself is like a Father to us. And when we think of a Father, we think of authority, but when we think of a good Father, we also think of love and compassion and understanding for His children. This month of June is the month of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. We just had a couple of days ago the Feast of the Sacred Heart. Let us take a few moments to reflect upon the devotion to the Sacred Heart of Jesus and what it means. First of all, devotion to the Sacred Heart was reserved, spiritual writers tell us, by God for the latter ages of the Church. For the first 1,500 years of Christianity, Devotion to the Sacred Heart was unknown. You could not have gone into a church in the year 1600. You could travel all throughout a Catholic country and go into many churches, and you would never have seen a picture or a statue of the Sacred Heart. The devotion was unknown. Practiced by a few pious souls in the seclusion of their convents or monasteries, but for the most part utterly unknown. Until around the year 1630 or 1640 when a very devout Catholic priest named St. John Eudes, is now a canonized saint, began to promote devotion to the Sacred Heart of Jesus and the Immaculate Heart of Mary in the 17th century. But then this devotion especially received an impetus from the revelations of our Lord himself to St. Margaret Mary which occurred in the 1670s. And our Lord appeared to St. Margaret Mary many times in her convent in paris le monial in France and told her about his tremendous love for us. And he said, he showed her an image of his heart. And he said, behold this heart which is wounded with love for men. He went on to talk about how much he loves his creatures and how much he desires to be loved in return. And he asked for reparation to his sacred heart, for the sins of those who do not love him as he deserves. And so this brings out the two principal pillars upon which devotion to the sacred heart is founded. And that is love for the sacred heart and reparation. To love our Lord who has loved us so much, and second, to try to atone for those who do not love him as he deserves to be loved. The devotion to the Sacred Heart is one which emphasizes the mercy of our Lord. If we're going to have a proper concept of who Jesus Christ is, yes, he is the Son of God, he is divine, he is the God-man, but we reflect upon the two qualities of our Lord, of justice and mercy. And if we're going to have a proper concept, we have to have a balance between the two. Because you see, in the early 1600s, there was a heresy known as Jansenism, which overemphasized the justice of our Lord. And so our Lord counteracted this heresy by the revelation of the devotion to his sacred heart. Yes, our Lord is just. He will one day be our judge. We pray in the Apostles' Creed of our Lord, from thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. Our Lord will judge all mankind and he will be a very strict judge from whom nothing will be hidden. Every sin, every crime that has not yet been atoned for and repented of will have its punishment. He is a judge who will not be able to be deceived and he will be perfectly just. Yes, our Lord is just, but he is also merciful. And the mercy of our divine Lord is infinite. Today's gospel brings out beautifully this quality of our Lord's mercy. How much he rejoices 
over one sinner who repents even more than over 99 who have no need of repentance. If we read the, about the public life of our Lord in the Gospels, we find that he was very comfortable, we might say, very much at home, around the poor, the simple, the uneducated, the downtrodden, the sick, and even the sinners. Our Lord, by choice, it would seem, associated more with the outcast, the, the outcast of society more so than with the high and the mighty and the wealthy and the famous. Yes, he did spend time with and even dined in the homes of Pharisees, but especially our Lord associated with the poor, the sick, the offcast of society, and even sinners. Thus we see the love and the mercy of the Sacred Heart. Who would be afraid? Who could be afraid to approach our Lord and ask His forgiveness and ask His mercy? When they read in the Gospels how much our Lord showed compassion to everyone, every sinner, no matter how great and how many his sins, who was truly sorry, was received by our Lord with tenderness, with compassion, with forgiveness. Our Lord loved repentant sinners. And so we see the mercy and the goodness of the Sacred Heart. And this is what we mean by the devotion to the Sacred Heart is that true concept of who our Lord is. Yes, eventually, on the last day, our just judge, but right now, our merciful Redeemer. I would like to read to you, and I know you've read them and reflected upon them many times before, the twelve promises of our Lord for those who have devotion to His Sacred Heart. If you love and honor the Sacred Heart of Jesus, this is what our Lord said He will do for you. I will give them all the graces necessary for their state in life. I will establish peace in their families. I will console them in their difficulties. I will be their secure refuge during life and more especially at the hour of death. Sinners will find in my heart a exposed and honored. I will give to priests the power of touching the most hardened hearts. Persons who propagate this devotion shall have their names written in my heart, and they shall never be effaced. I will grant the grace of final repentance to all those who shall communicate on the first Friday nine months consecutively. They shall not die in mortal sin, nor without having received the last sacraments, for my divine heart will become their secure refuge at that last moment. The amazing goodness and mercy of our Divine Lord to give us these wonderful promises. Let us during this month of June rekindle our devotion to the Sacred Heart. Pray, even daily if you can, the litany of the Sacred Heart during this month. Renew your family consecration to the Sacred Heart, for I trust that all of you have had your homes enthroned to the Sacred Heart. And if there is anyone who has never had your home enthroned to the Sacred Heart, I would be very happy to do so. Let us honor our Lord's Sacred Heart and remember His love and goodness. Let us atone for those by our love to make atonement for those who do not love Him. And let us try to give to Him the love that He deserves. He who is truly the best of all fathers. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost.